Welcome, family, friends. Thank you all for attending this celebration of the life of Richard Decker. For many of you who traveled long distances to be here today, uh, that's much appreciated. Richard was my father-in-law and the best second dad I could have ever hoped to have had. Um, as many of you know, because of illness, I was unable to travel to Indiana to be here when he passed. Uh, so I'm grateful and honored to now be able to share a few words about his life. Richard Bishop Decker, age 93, passed away on November 7, 2022 at Life's Journey, Avon, Indiana. He was born to, Fred, born to Fred J. Decker and Eva Landon Decker on May 13, 1929 in Mineral Point, Wisconsin. During his teenage years, Richard enjoyed skiing, riding his motorcycle, and training his beloved dog, Mike. After graduation from Wausau Senior High School and completing two years of college at the University of Wisconsin, Richard enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He served as an electronic technician for three years, being discharged in 1954. He met Janice Yock at a birthday party for a mutual friend, and they were married on September 3, 1955. Richard then went on to finish his college education, graduating from the University of Wisconsin with a degree in business administration. Richard worked for Caterpillar Tractor before moving to Wausau and working with his mother in her drapery business. In 1963, he was offered a position with GTE, where he remained until his retirement in 1986. Working for a large company, Richard was given the opportunity to move to Florida, where his family enjoyed four years of camping, boating on the Gulf, and exploring all the state had to offer before being transferred to Indiana. After retirement, he and Jan lived at a lake home that he helped build until moving one more time to Danville, Indiana. Richard loved, loved fixing things. If it was broken, he fixed it. He also enjoyed dancing. He and Jan were avid ballroom and square dancers for many years. He loved making animal pancakes for his grandchildren and taking long winter vacations with Jan back in Florida. Richard had a strong work ethic, which he applied to every aspect of his life. He was a patient, thoughtful, encouraging, and forgiving man. He offered his advice when asked, and he was often asked, as he had many experiences to share for the benefit of his family. Richard was preceded in death by his parents and his brother, Fred. He is survived by his wife of 67 years, Jan, his son, Jeffrey, Lisa, Decker, his daughter, Karen, Hans, Cussero, his grandchildren, Brittany, Azra Molana, Cussero, Catherine, Mike, Sells, Zachary, fiance Jenny McPherson, Decker, and Adam Decker, and his great granddaughters, Mia and Brielle Sells. Richard donated his body to Anatomy Gifts Registry, providing an educational experience for pre med and nursing students. Go off script just a bit. So even in death, he was giving. I miss him. Now I'm going to hand it over to Britt. So I've been asked to share a song, one of Grandpa's favorite songs, Why Me, by Chris Christopherson. And I think that it speaks very highly to his faith, the way that he saw God and others, um, his humility, and the way that he showed up and showed God's love in the world just by being here every day. Of 
the pleasures I know. Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you or the kindness you I'll invite my mom, Karen, up to read a scripture. A reading of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi, I'm Zach Decker. I'm Richard's oldest grandson. I was asked to sing today and was really looking forward to it, but some sickness got in the way of our travel plans, but I wanted to make sure that I was still able to, in some form, uh, share the music. Um, yeah, so here is uh, Softly and Tenderly. Thanks.
Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Patient and loving, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come Why should we linger when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we wait then and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home. tenderly Jesus is calling calling oh sinner come home oh for the wonderful love he has promised promised for you and for me though have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home, calling, O oh sinner, come From the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I'm P.T. Wilson, the pastor here at Danville United Methodist Church. Obviously, I didn't know Dick as long as many of you did, only about six years. I would have loved to have seen him skiing. I can imagine that smile on his face would break out. And I would have loved to have seen when he and Jan went ballroom dancing or square dancing. That would have been a time of great joy. I think, Jan, one time you told me about your dancing days in which he came home from the work and said, let me change my clothes and let's go dancing. How exciting, the dance of life. This morning, let me uplift just a couple of items. Let me uplift Jan, that, Jan, I'm so glad you have your family here. Such a good group of people who wouldn't be nearly as good without you and Dick. You've done well by them. You've been good parents, grandparents, and I read great-grandparents. Wow. Well done. So Dick was a man that I knew when he and Jan would come in on Friday afternoons to help fold bulletins or help fold newsletters or do whatever Kathy, our administrative assistant, needed at that time. And he would come and he would sit there and he might say 10 words the entire time that all the women there were talking. But he listened to every single thing that people were saying and before he left, he would give one of those wisdom statements that just put everything into context about what somebody was talking about, some of the problems in their life, or some of the issues that some of their family members were going through. And I bet he did those wisdom statements for all of you. He had that sparkle in his eye. He loved a good joke as long as it was a good joke. He didn't want anybody to waste his time otherwise. <laughs> but he loved a good joke. And he loved helping out, even in his late 80s when I first met him, that he could do something that made a difference and that he could do something which would make a difference and help in somebody else's life. That was important to him. There's a scripture that comes to mind, and it comes out of the book of Philippians. And it's one of those areas in the Apostle Paul's writings where he's trying to include the religious teachings from other groups as he's helping to develop the Christian faith. And he includes a religious understanding that comes from a group of folk who lived in what we would call Greece and Macedonia today. And here's what he says from Philippians chapter 2. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. In which you shine like stars in the world. So today, we may not have a casket, we may not have a body, we may not have ashes. But every time you look up at the sky and you see a star, you remember Dick Decker. Because what he did and how he lived 
He shines like a star. His life was not so easy the last few years, as many of you shared with him. And people did all that they could as they saw him aging. As a man who fixed things, if something could be fixed, he was going to do whatever it took to fix it. The last couple of years of his life, he couldn't fix what was going on physically, so he tried to fix any type of relationships, leaving those gifts for people to have for the rest of your lives. And so those brief little words, sometimes wisdom sayings, sometimes affirmations, just to let you know that you mattered to him. And then the last few days of his life, he was able to be there receiving the love of his family and knowing that his life had made a difference. What more could any of us ask for? To be 93 years old and not have to go through the horrible situations that he had seen with family and friends over the generations and not have to linger, but to be in peace and to know that he was surrounded in love. I got to visit a few times while he was in that setting. And I got so tickled in a way that any time the family came close enough to him, he tried to rise up a little bit and try to listen to what they were going to say and maybe even communicate back and forth. And then as the days wore on, he wasn't able to do that so much. But if a family member was close by, he was going to hang on and do whatever he could. I think he was waiting until everybody was out of the room so that he wouldn't disappoint anybody who was there with him. And this man who loved being outdoors and this man who loved building things, this man who loved finding God in the creation, found God in the creation of what we call death. And there are all sorts of ways in which we can understand life after death. There are all sorts of images throughout the scriptures. But ultimately, what matters is how we've lived on this earth, and a belief in an acceptance that God accepts us when it's our time to return. So he has returned to the creation, maybe as a star in the sky. Here are these words from Ecclesiastes 3. Jeff, you did a great job on a difficult passage to read aloud. I stumble every time I do the first eight verses of Ecclesiastes 3. I quit doing them. I can never do it as well as the birds did back in the 1960s. For everything, there is a season, turn, turn, turn. But I think the scriptures that follow that apply very well here today. Hear these words from Ecclesiastes 3, beginning in verse 9. What gain have the workers from our toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everybody to be busy with. God has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, God has put a sense of past and future into our minds, yet we cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for us than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before God. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. 
And so from our perspective, a life is over here on the earth. A life that was well lived. From a spiritual perspective in ways that's above our pay grade to understand. God has seeked Dick Decker. God has found Dick Decker. Dick Decker has found God. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you for a man who lived a long time and who made every single day count. We thank you for a man who fell in love and was able to live in marriage for 67 years with the love of his life. We thank you for his children, for the families they have created, for their partners, for the grandchildren. We thank you for the ways in which he kept on finding things to do, even towards the last few years. And God, we thank you that he was surrounded by love, even towards the end. Now, it's more painful for us because we miss him. And it's more painful for us because we don't fully understand what comes next. But today we trust. Today we trust. And in the days ahead, when we need somebody to talk to full of wisdom, we may look up at the sky and hear the words we need to hear. May his loving presence continue in these good people's lives. And may his loving presence ever draw nearer, God, ever draw nearer to you. These things we ask in your love. Amen. There's going to be a hymn now, How Great Thou Art, and then I'll give a benediction. Everyone could please stand as you're able to join us uh, and open your hymnals to number 77. Uh, like he said, our closing hymn is How Great Thou Art. We'll be singing verses uh, 1 and 4.
sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. I get to share with you a benediction, and then I also get to pray for the meal. Two for the price of one. What a deal. There is an old symbol out of the Hebrew faith, which is actually the second oldest symbol we know regarding spirituality from religions of the West. Now, it's a symbol that basically comes out of Orthodox and Conservative Judaism, out of an understanding from that tradition that God gives us breath from the moment we're born and the moment that we have our first breath on the world, that is God's presence with us. That's a gift. And so as long as we are breathing, then this life of ours is a gift from God until we breathe our last. And the traditional words that go along with this benediction are something like this. I'm not going to do them in Hebrew, but something like this, that as long as God gives you the gift of life, the breath of life, may your breath be long and deep and filled with love. May your days be prosperous and may you be surrounded by those who love and care for you. May your work be successful, and may you know that you have made a difference. And when you return to God by breathing your last, may you know that you have been blessed. A young kid grew up in Massachusetts, later on went to Hollywood, was an actor in all these bad movies, always getting killed as the bad guy. And then in the 1960s, got asked to be a part of this weird show that they were putting on NBC. And about five or six episodes in to a show that nobody thought would last three episodes, the leader, the director, came up to him and said, I want you to develop some way of saying hello and goodbye to people who are from your race in this television show. You've got 10 minutes to figure something out. And the actor, Leonard Nimoy, decided I could let the people back in Massachusetts know I've not forgotten my faith. And so he raised his hand to give the Ruach Haradon, the symbol for the breath of God. And while he could not do the whole blessing, he said, live long and prosper. As long as you are alive on the earth, may your breath be deep and warm and filled with love and good work. May you be prosperous until you breathe your last breath. Return to God and know that this life has been a blessing for you. Go now as God's people. Let's pray for the meal. God, for the food that's been prepared, for all the ladies and men who have cooked for this, for those who have uh, develop the service for those who are going to be serving us. We give you thanks for this family that gets to share together even more. May this next hour and a half, two hours be a blessing for all. Amen. <laughs>